Uh, so welcome to EdChat Interactive and Jamie Donnelly. Uh, welcome to you. Thank you for joining us tonight and talking about augmented reality. And I guess there's a there's a difference between augmented reality and fake news, right? They're not the same thing, are they? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it can be fake news, um, <laughs> especially when you say it like Mary Alice Curran, augmentative reality. You know? uh, that's fake news. But uh, I'm like, is that like argumentative augmented reality? Like, are you argument, <laughs> arguing with it? Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's really a neat topic. I mean, I, I share about AR and VR together quite often. So you'll see some things in here of some of those same concepts, but there are, um, you know, a lot of things that could be done today that we maybe heard a little bit about along the way in the past few years. It's certainly growing. So it's an exciting topic for right now. And uh, and I, I know you have slides because you have a lot to present. Uh, so um, so I'm not going to be completely in the background because I'm going to pop up and ask questions or comments. And I'd like to encourage everybody else to also ask questions. I have temporarily muted everybody uh, so that we don't get feedback. But if you have something that you want to add, you can either type it into the group chat or you can um, you know uh, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, uh, Jamie or or me a question. So go ahead, Jamie. Awesome. Great. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, and then that way I can talk to you about some of this stuff. But while I'm talking to you about it, you also can, um, you know, see a visual, hopefully make the connection. One of the really hard topics of AR VR is uh, you really have to, you can't just talk through it. If I were to just verbally explain something, I think it's uh, certainly a challenge to explain this kind of technology without a visual to back up or an experience to see. Um, so feel free at any time if you guys want to unmute and ask any questions. And, and um, I would love for this to be more engaging discussion, as it's stated. So uh, I don't want to necessarily just do slide share, let me explain, and you guys ask questions at the end. So at any time, if you have comments or ideas or uh, questions or even asking out to the group, maybe how this has been something beneficial maybe for somebody else. So feel free at any time. I am happy to have that engaging conversation. As a matter of fact, I'm probably more comfortable with that than just presenting. So feel free. Um, I, you know, like I said before, AR, VR to me is something that um, I tried to separate a long time ago. I tried to do AR over here and VR over here. And when I was doing that, I noticed that people kept combining the two. They did, you know, I actually had a VR group. VR and EDU, believe it or not, was the starting point of AR, VR, and EDU. So VR and EDU, um, people kept bringing in AR. And I'd go, oh, yeah, that's great. Let me talk about that. But that's AR, remember, guys. This over here is VR. Um, and as it progressed, I realized, why do I keep separating these two? Because there's so much um, that they do together and are in common. So you'll see some of those things as well. But, you know, a lot of the ways that we're going to see in storytelling is through books. Um, we're going to see some of those books come to life. There's been books out there through time that have come and gone. Um, some of those books might even be, for instance, um, uh, Guinness Book of World Records and having that book uh actually come to life for many years and then they made a year where they stopped doing it and it was like wait what where's our books you know these are supposed to come to life um and so that was kind of a bummer so some of these books have come into play and then went away and then some of these books have come into play even recently like this one disrupted and this one is a book that is really for that uh early literacy just getting our kids inspired to want to read so it's dealing with those students who are resistant readers like myself. Um, I had a hard time reading growing up because I just wasn't interested. And I think that this really and honestly is a way to entice our kids to want to learn. So those technology students, those kids that love playing with technology, uh, this is going to be pulling them and enticing them to really engage in stories. So this is one of those tools disrupted it. Uh, does anybody have anything to say about that? I heard an echo. Okay, so feel free. Um, so that is an example of a book. This is an app called StoryFab. Um, I know, uh, I think Rochelle's on here. Rochelle and I have shared this 
exact session together a couple different times. Um, and I know StoryFab a long time ago was like a huge app that I, I just love playing with and, and Rochelle and I shared it a lot. Um, and then they didn't update. So when Apple required a lot of these apps that have been around for a long time to update, this particular one didn't. And 99% of the time they don't ever update. They, they moved on to something else. Um, but surprisingly this company, uh, Spooklight is the company that makes this and they did update StoryFab recently in the past few, uh, six months or so. And it's an awesome product. You actually use augmented reality as a camera man or camera woman, and you can go and take different shots and video in a screen, like as if you're, you're the uh, person recording, you're pulling your characters in, you can change their emotion, their expressions, um, you can change the scenery, and you can record from scene to scene to scene, and it ties it all together as one collective movie at the end. Um, it's a really neat way of pulling in storytelling because it's actually using a trigger image. So it even works on older devices. And with that trigger image, it's tying those objects in place. And as you're moving it around a recording, um, it allows it to be tethered to that trigger image. So as long as you're recording and always keeping that in view, you're capturing that. Um, so this one is a great one. I like that it works on older devices and plus I like the fact that you're making a movie. At the end, you have a finished product. You've created the scene. You've created their animation. You've created where they're moving. You've created what's happening next and this comes into play and all of it just kind of ties together and it's um, a really neat story. Rochelle, since you are on, I don't know if you'd want to share something maybe. I don't know if you've done this with your students or you've seen something like that in action. or you can stay muted. That's okay. And, and as she said, oh boy. So I, you know, as, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking <laughs> that this would be really useful for teaching social emotional learning so that the kids yeah. could be creating situations where they needed a certain amount of emotional intelligence and then maybe modeling the um, different ways they could have handled those situations using using videos. You know, interestingly enough, um, every time I use this as an example and show how to use StoryFab, I always make the girl mad and she's like angry and a bully. And then the boy or whoever the other character is, is the one that gets hurt and offended. And then all of a sudden they talk it through. Oh, that hurt my feelings. So interestingly enough, it, a student dealing with something even as like bullying, right? Something traumatic in their life, something that they can just get out there and how, where's the solution? Where's something that would actually help that person progress? So hmm. interestingly enough, I've used it for social emotional learning every time I've ever used it, for examples. And um, I've created a whole series of videos in the past um, for a company called Who Knew It? And when I would show StoryFab, every piece of it and um, putting it all together at the end of the day and having this video to play. Now, if somebody's going to view it, they're not viewing it in AR, they're viewing it as a video. Right. But, and um, is it free or is it a paid or do you pay? 100% free. 100% free? Yeah. And uh, and Rochelle was saying that you could also use this for language learning. So somebody mm -hmm. could write it, could write the story. And if they're learning Spanish, they could say the story in Spanish. Or if they're, if it's ELL students, they could, uh, they could take the story and they could practice writing, writing their English or, use, or speaking their English for the story. Absolutely. I was showing this on Sunday to a, um, to a group, I'm sorry, a week ago, a week and two days ago, I guess now, um, to a Jewish school. And there were several different Jewish schools being pulled in for this AR VR training. And they had said uh, the same thing as far as language development, right? They said, well, we want our students to practice Hebrew, and they don't necessarily always want to be on video doing that. But to have these characters as, you know, you're vocalizing and verbalizing for them, but this is something that they can actually practice and it's not contingent on a specific language. Um, it's pretty neat. That's a great idea, Rochelle. So, and I'm thinking that maybe I, my wife can practice this so she can ask, she can stop asking me to take the garbage out. <laughs> she could set up a whole movie about how right? you never take it out. I, I need to start that myself. Right. Uh, thank you for the idea. Mitch. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so another one that is um, one that I love that really has to do more with the language development. This is, I've been sharing this for a long time. This came out, it's called Catchy Words AR. And this app came out a long time ago uh, when AR kit apps were first released, day one. So Apple releases to developers and developers had a specific date where they were able to um, push out for the new devices that were coming out and uh, about two and a half years ago. And so they then were able to get out these apps that were called you know, AR kit compatible devices. And uh, these devices then can walk around and it did some tracking of the surface and people were able to go and explore, create or collaborate all of these different features. And in this one, the very, you know, again, at first day it went out, I thought, wow, hangman and augmented reality, whoop de doo right? Um, I played myself um, and that you can see those letters up there twisted is actually the word toe, T-O-E. And the first time it was released, you couldn't customize what the word said, but now you can. Um, I think it was the first update you were able to customize what word was up there. But you can see the box in the lower part of the screen, and you can see the dashes, similar to the concept of, you know, hangman. And then the letters up there, which you're saying, Jamie, I don't see the T and the O is not really up there. I see the E, but that's because the angle of which we're looking. I would have to walk around and look at the angle of those letters. And connecting vocabulary with our students, it's obviously a critical part of storytelling, right? Um, was really difficult for my daughter. She has dyslexia. Um, and it wasn't until I had her use it when she was not successful with some of her, her vocabulary words. So I would tell her to write it down 10 times and say it 10 times. We'd go through the whole ordeal. And uh, then I get mad. She's not looking at me anymore. And why are you not paying attention? Focus. Um, and then so I'm doing this and getting frustrated. Why is this not working? Um, and then I said, you know what? This app just came out. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I gave it to her and I typed in when the first update came out. I typed in the word that she was struggling with. And when she went through and actually played it, it took her a really, really long time. So you actually have to physically walk up with your device and capture the letter with your device. And then you have to grab what's on your device and put it down in the box below. And you have to put it all in the correct order. And so, you know, there's three boxes down there. Of course, you only see one of those boxes from the angle I captured that photo but you get the point. So they go, uh, she was going through and putting the letters in that order. And finally, I mean, she walked around and looked and then had to walk around and look at another angle and then walked around. Finally, she finished. And I thought, boy, this was a bad idea. This was like more frustrating than ever for me just to watch. Um, and Ellie ended up uh, finishing it. It celebrates with you. You have confetti, you're excited. And I said, okay, now, will you just tell me how to spell that word? She told me. I thought, okay. And so an hour later, I asked her again, and she told me again. The next day, on our way to school, um, I asked her again. It was on our way for the vocabulary or uh, spelling words. And she was able to tell me again. And I had to sit back and say, what happened? Why was this so successful for her? And um, which you probably are already thinking, when we physically get up and move around, there's something that changes in the way our brains function and what we retain. So we all know that the connection to physical movement, um, how our brain activates, how we're able to retain things, of course, our students that are kinesthetic learners and all that. Um, but there was also something really special about this app for her because she, it, she has dyslexia. So seeing those letters twisted and turned was extra challenging for her. And to see that she's able to sit there and have to work so hard and finally finish it, what her brain's going to do is it's going to say, hey, I've worked that hard. I'm not going to work that hard again. This next time, I'll remember this. I'm going to retain this because I don't want to have to work that hard again. And so while it was very challenging for her, that was the point. When our students are challenged, they're going to retain that information because they need to retain it and their brain doesn't want to have to work that hard. But unfortunately, oftentimes we're in our Google informational um, time where anything and everything's available to us like that. And when it's available that quickly, we're not going to store it. And so for her to actually be challenged to do something and then put that into practice, physically getting up 
and actually having to move around and put that into practice, that was something she was able to keep her and, and hold on to. So with storytelling comes words and those words that maybe our students might have uh, more difficulty with, especially in spelling and writing. This is something that I think is really helpful in that. And I'll say, uh, Jean pointed this out, uh, and I went on the App Store also. It's 99 cents now, so it's not, it's, it's not very expensive, but it's not free. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And it is still iOS specific, um, so it's not on Android devices, but I will tell you, appealing to classrooms, most of the time you're going to see that iOS is going to win because they were the first to release. And if you're looking at a classroom perspective, if they do have a tablet in the classroom, most of the time it's an iPad. It's not going to be an Android tablet. So um, when they're looking at their you know, audience, they're really looking at what are those classroom devices being purchased for the classroom. So um, anyway, so that's, that's something to keep in mind. I know my friends like Rochelle, who has an Android device, hates to hear that, but it's the truth. Okay, so this is an example here. <laughs> I'm going to mute that because that might have been really loud for you like it was for me. But I will show you that while um, this is even paused, this video here, I'm able to move around and look around. And if you haven't already figured this out, I'm looking at a YouTube video. I've, I'm able to embed YouTube 360s inside of my slides and actually see it in 360. So as a student that is looking through a mobile device, or on their Chromebooks, they can actually click around and look. And there are so many resources for our students within the 360 realm. And if you go onto YouTube, um, what started out is really having to filter through a lot of 360 videos for stories or for content. You had to always type that in in your search. Whereas now there's actually um, an option in your filter to just specifically look up 360. So you don't actually have to put in 360 in your search anymore. You just look up a topic and then go into your filter and actually filter out 360 videos. If they're on mobile devices, they can lift it up and look around. They can do a split view and put it into a headset as well as having the option on Chromebooks. So there's a lot out there in 360 available for our students that um, are free and very easy to apply in the classroom. All right, speaking of stories, we have stories in history. Now, if history was taught to me like this, I can guarantee I would have loved my class. I would have loved this subject because um, I started off Alamo reality, um, has now transformed into quantum era. Um, they went through a couple different transitions and names and their products have continued to evolve. But this company is doing some pretty cool stuff within, um, in this case, these are character cards. So you can see here that this, and I, I haven't muted, I'm gonna try to unmute. To the battle. Bowie became seriously ill and turned over sole command to Travis. Okay, so what you're gonna see here is in that story, um, we're actually learning some of the characters from the Alamo. Uh, they have character cards, they have playing mats, they have books, uh, they have augmented reality portals that you can walk through and show up at the Alamo. Uh, there's so many interactive, engaging ways using immersive technology that allows you to get to know what happened in history in a really, um, really immersive but critical for our individual learners, our personalized experiences. And what I really like about this app is that, you know, typically you see a card and something comes to life, but this one actually can allow you to use two different cards. So we have two different characters in history that you can look at independently and see who they are. In this case, you can put them together, the cards together, and you can see how those characters interact in history together. Um, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. They actually, you know, if you're ever, and if you're in a different state other than Texas, let's be honest, you don't care about the Alamo. <laughs> I mean, for some reason, us Texans really love the Alamo. Um, but you guys are probably like, yeah, we don't really cover that. Um, but they are working on Gettysburg and finishing up that project. And they have a lot of incredible interactions that will be coming out. 
my uh, understanding is that they also have a way to load a canon. Students actually will use augmented reality and learn how the time and um, the process to load a canon and finalize that and seeing how that was a part of that time, um, a part of that war, and really some of the things that we've even transitioned in, in history with technology that has improved that. So some of those things that I think our kids are gonna need to have those experiences that we don't often have the opportunity to do. I actually never made it down to the Alamo until, uh, let's see, 2000, let's see, 2000, geez, was it this year? It might've been this year, uh, but I went down to the Alamo maybe maybe January this year or last year, January, um, for the first time. And having lived here in Texas for 13 years, you'd think that would be something I would have visited at some point, especially having been in San Antonio a few different times. Um, but I went down there because this company was actually doing a scavenger hunt at the Alamo. So they were actually using augmented reality portals, meaning I'm in my device, I'm with my device, however you have it, and I'm able to walk through kind of this sphere, in their case, a door, into a portal, you walk in and inside the portal, all of a sudden, again, this is kind of the uh, augmented reality side and the virtual reality side. I walk in through this portal and I'm then at the Alamo. Everywhere I look is the Alamo. Um, it's a really cool experience, but I will tell you, it wasn't until I was there and they showed me and they go, we want you to actually show what it would be like at really authentically what it looked like back then, but what we see today. And I was like, well, wait a minute, we're like in the Alamo. And they're like, oh my gosh, Jamie, you're the tour guide. You're supposed to know this. Um, so I, it like hit me that I always thought the Alamo was going to be behind there, but it was like, no, 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 we're standing in the Alamo. It was just, it was a neat experience for them. It was a neat experience for me. Um, but I think also giving our students a chance to go to places that maybe that they've never been. And this company is really looking from the historical view, they really have, these projects are not small projects. These, this company has went out and these are million dollar projects that they are working with um, historians and they are really getting the authentic content and um, objects that they are scanning in and making available for you to bring into your class. And, and what's the company again? Quantum Era. Quantum Era, okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're doing some cool stuff, Mitch. Um, all right, so that's their character cards. That was one example of um, something that they did. This one, going back to the virtual reality side, this is actually in a headset, and it, I was taking a video of this um, going on the moon. And so uh, I think Neil Armstrong is up there with me, and uh, we are walking around on the moon from spot to spot. Now I'm using something um, called an Oculus Go, and the Oculus Go is pretty much you sit there and I was selecting where I wanted to walk around. And that was a cool experience and it was neat just to go and see and then look around. And, and honestly, when you're putting on those headsets <laughs> and you're like, whoa, wait a minute, uh, I'm back in reality. It takes you or your brain a few seconds to realize what's going on, sometimes even longer depending on how long you were in there. Um, but it was a neat experience to um, go on the Apollo experience. They've created but now they have the oculus quest where you can actually walk around on the moon i'm not having to select where i want to walk to on the oculus go like i was but instead i'm actually walking around and exploring um, so it's it's phenomenal and the content again going back to the history of this but many times i don't know about you but i've never been to the moon so um i've never been brought to the moon with my classroom um, so this is one of those things that will allow you to bridge that connection and that learning for them and all the content. Now I'm only showing you one little piece, but all of the historical content and actually going up into space and seeing things below you and around you and hearing all of the uh, content of what was being talked about and discussed um, in the process. So there was a lot of content out there for you to explore. This one is one of my very favorite storytelling apps, and this is called Wonderscope. Uh, Wonderscope, oh, let me go back. See if I can get that playing. There we go. 
Wonderscope, this is just one of their uh, experiences. Hello, everyone. Hi. Well, hello there. Bonjour. What are you all doing here? Yeah, they must have come from Texas saying y'all, right? Um, so what it does is you actually guide the story. So you read the, the prompts at the bottom, but while you're reading it, it progresses the story. If you don't read it, it will not progress until you read it. Um, there's some ways around that, uh, but what the point of this type of experience, this was made by a company called Within. Within does a lot of virtual reality content. Um, and they have pretty much been in the entertainment industry. And I, this is certainly edutainment, right? So it's stories that come to life in your space. In this case, it was on my floor. And um, the story actually goes through and engages with you on some crazy adventures these people have been through. Um, a TV pops up and then you can see them jump into the television and inside the TV, they're telling their stories. But Throughout the story, you're actively engaged. You're reading, you're moving around with it, you're putting pieces together, putting their plane together. So all of these things are all happening in your space. So whenever I have done Wonderscope, um, I've went to school districts where I've done this like right before lunch, like the last thing before lunch, and then you guys go off to lunch, we'll come back. And people actually skip lunch. So I'm like, okay, we gotta push back lunch, nobody's leaving. Um, so it's just really cool to see how engaging it is and how much even teachers love it. But again, going back to our reluctant readers, getting, getting them at, in the middle of the story and actively wanting to read. I think that's pretty neat. Has anybody ever seen this one? I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it's this cool. One? No, no, it's cool. Yeah, they, there's some things on there that your kids will really, really love. I can guarantee that. All right, I'll move on. Um, and I could see David in here. David was at the school, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before that day. Um, and many of these we covered and talked through as well. So um, if David has any ideas, feel free to jump in. Um, this one is, well, let's see. This one's called Story Up. And um, Story Up lets you do some virtual reality, um, similar to the concept of YouTube, but it is, um, it is available within an app. It's looking, again, going back, Mitch, to the social emotional learning aspect too. It's building empathy um, with people across the world, understanding what other struggles are happening around the world that you would, you know, we're blinded. We're kind of focused in on our own little worlds, our own little bubbles. I mean, I've lived in different parts of the country. I grew up in California. I've lived in Chicago area. I've lived in Massachusetts and now living here in Texas. And seeing different parts of the country has given me different perspectives. And I can't tell you how many students are so stuck in their own space. I remember one time asking a group of students, um, I think they were in first grade. And it was here in Texas. I was like, you know, what are you guys going to do this summer? Like trying to figure out like, okay, how to make the connections for what they're excited about. There was a kid that was like, I'm going to Walmart. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with these kids? They need to get out of here. Um, but, you know, that was going to be an exciting adventure for them, apparently. And, um, you know, I think about like how limited our students are and even in the classroom because, you know, what we used to be able to do and, and be able to go see has certainly been restricted. I mean, not just for funding and not just for transportation, but even as Mitch and I were talking about earlier, liability, you know, some of the things that you might encounter. I know people traveling overseas and all the, th all the risks involved with something like that. So um, sometimes our kids are really limited, but Story Up does a really great job at bringing those really important stories from around the world right in view for your students so that that compassion is built, that there is um, a, an actionable piece of how to help support somebody that maybe you would have never known was struggling or suffering. So I really like that app. They've done a great job. They've also worked on really creating a scene, um, an experience that's uh, serene for you and helps you kind of digest and, and process the things that are going on in your life as well. So you can go to a beach. That's my favorite one. 
Okay, so uh, this is called Thing, T-H-Y-N-G. This one does uh, some cool stuff. You can add in a lot of different experiences, it has really good tracking that takes place inside of your space, um, some animation that you could pull in, repeated animation. I decided uh, in my space that I was gonna go ahead and add a little aquarium and, uh, you know, I'm in Texas, so there are alligators. I'm pretty close to the Louisiana border. And, um, and you know, just some really neat things that I have in my space happening right there, all using Thing app. Now, it's using that AR kit, like I talked to you about it before. Um, AR kit's gonna track the space. It's gonna know where to place things. And as you're walking around, it's keeping it stuck in that space because it's watching you as you're walking. So it's tracking how far away you're walking and around and such. Um, and hopefully it's also detecting the walls so it stays within that boundary and that border. Um, what Thing also does, and this is a great alternative because I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I loved Erasma. Um, and you know, HP Reveal it later became, and now it's going away, what am I gonna do? Well, Thing actually not just the surface tracking, they also allow you to track on objects. So scannable objects that you submit to them and then they make it available within a day. So you actually submit what you want you can give them a 3D object to layer on top. So here's my picture that I want to scan and I want this on top or I want a video on top or I want a picture on top. So you submit that on their website, then a day it's available and you go to scan it and bam, it's done for your classroom. There's actually somebody that goes in and manually and has been doing this for a while, excuse me, um, as they're working kind of the back channel of supporting a way for you to have the access to this creation tool on your own but um, it's free. So all their content uh, that is scannable is amazing. Um, but what I really like, I mean, you can buy packages. So there's packages that you can purchase by one, the alligator package, the aquarium package. So there's things on there, lots free. Um, but then in addition, there is a way to purchase certain library items inside of there as well, if, should you choose. Um, but the scannable feature for the classroom is completely free. And I think that is just so cool for a classroom to actually have something created as an alternative. And guess what? Doesn't require you to follow a channel like you have to with Erasmus or HP Reveal. I don't have to share out a code for everybody so they know what to have first. All they have to do is download the app and when they, when they see it, it, it scans and becomes available. So thing is uh, pretty cool. And the two guys that do this, they're outside of Chicago. They're pretty awesome too. So um, Moat Boat is um, one for our littles. And this one's really great because there's gonna be times your students wanna create some augmented reality. And I always demo this live, by the way. Um, in this case, I'm not gonna be able to share this, but what Moat Boat does is um, similar to what you just saw. You have these characters that come into play. You add these characters on this environment, this landscape that you have. But what's different about this is you can actually give voice commands and the augmented reality response. So it's actually um, intertwined with Siri. So if I were to say dog bite man, and it goes ding ding, and all of a sudden the character dog goes up to the man, and all of a sudden like these lightning bolts come out, and he goes, oh, and it shows that the dog bit the man. Um, sometimes you could put a cow on there and say, cow fly. And then it goes, da ding And all of a sudden the cow goes flying up in the sky, comes back down. And then he goes flying back up in the sky and comes back down. So you see um, essentially this augmented reality being voice commanded to them. Um, and sometimes you, could, you can't do things. So it's really kind of fun to see what's possible and what's not. And sometimes it lets you do realistic things and sometimes it lets you do unrealistic things. Um, sometimes it's uh, things that you find and, and is funny. I said one time there was a fire and people around the fire and I said, woman light fire. And all of a sudden she showed up on top of the fire and she was holding a torch. And it was like, well, that's interesting that she lit the fire, but it was, you know, not necessarily what I thought as lighting the fire. So. Um, it's just a neat app. These people are actually based right now out of California and um, the Bay Area. 
but they are Canadians and they have some great vision with this and certainly some opportunities as things come up. But a really cool concept for our littles that can't type in what they're trying to do. They can't search for what they're trying to do uh, using letters, um, but to be able to give commands verbally and see those commands come to life in action, I think is really cool. Moat boat, I believe, is completely free as well. Um, then we see the stories that we all know and love. It's been around forever and ever. This also was around the first day AR kit apps were released. And this one is my very hungry caterpillar on my very dead grass. So um, you can see the, the activity and um, the story comes to life in your space. I was dropping some apples for my caterpillar. And as cat caterpillar continued to eat, continued to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. You can see right there, I was dropping some things into the grass. And inside of that uh, cabinet, there was also some games you could play with it. You could blow some bubbles, it plays with the ball and does some really cool stuff. And of course, you know what's gonna happen to that caterpillar as it gets bigger and bigger. So we'll see it eventually become a butterfly. But I was always in, too impatient to see that process all the way through. I was just in my videos, but you can see this come to life and you can go in. And this one is, I wanna say $2.99 is the way it was listed at the time. Uh, pretty cheap, but you can go through that story and um, take what you're reading in your classroom and seeing some of the stories even coming to life in your space. Um, if you don't know that 3D Bear, you should. Um, I know several people in this group that is, they are already familiar with 3D Bear. Um, you know, similar to the concept of thing, you have these different characters brought into your space. Um, and you are able to place that into your space, take a recording, walk around those items. You actually can record your voice. And so seeing those items actually come to life in your space is pretty surreal. Um, probably the easiest app for any real situation that I ever use. So whenever I'm sitting somewhere like, I don't know, the Alamo, Rochelle was like, oh, we should do 3D Bear out here. It's like, you're right, let's do this, let's do that. So it was like all these different ideas and inspiration of how to use 3D Bear anyway. I mean, I mean, anything's out there. They have a lot of integrations and I'll show you, show you that on the next slide, but the benefit of using 3D Bear is the ease of use and you have all these different library objects. And I will say, it, as opposed to thing that is more entertainment focused, um, they actually have some great lineups specifically for curriculum. They have items in their library for teachers they can go in and get lesson plans so that they can build this into their classroom and immediately use it. Um, there's AR challenges that are going out often, and those AR challenges have a ton of different resources of things going out there and taking place. So um, lots of great stuff happening, great ambassador group. Um, and I, I'm smiling because I'm one of them. And um, they have some great stuff that's consistently going out and consistently being improved upon. Now, this is, um, you know, I'm letting you know that those challenges are out there because it gives you a lot of ideas of how to use this. But this is a little bit of app smashing too. Uh, Mary Alice Curran, oh, Mary Alice Curran had created uh, this video and she took a book by Jerry Pilata. The Versus Spinosaurus by Jerry Pilata. Millions and millions of years ago, so you can see here, what she's done is she's taken the video using 3D Bear that actually had the two different dinosaurs inside of 3D Bear available. And she took the book that was talking and comparing and contrasting these two dinosaurs. And then she was reading it and she decided to take the video, which recorded her voice as well, and, aug and the augmented reality. She took that and she uploaded it into Apple Clips. And inside of Apple Clip, she was able to get the uh, closed captions. And having the closed captions available for students that wouldn't be able to hear it and can read it and see it. So she was doing some app smashing with this to really take that to the next level. What's important to her in immersive tech is the accessibility. And um, she's done a great job with that. In addition to some of the things that you can do with 3D Bears, there's some integrations in there. Um, they have Thingiverse 
So all of the 3D content coming from 3D Thingiverse is available inside of the 3D Bear app. You can also upload your own 3D content inside of the app. Um, and they also have, I believe, Sketchfab is coming out um, as the next release. And yeah, that Sketchfab just came out. Oh, it did? It's out? Yeah, it's out. I haven't played with it yet. That's going to be <laughs> cool. So Sketchfab now is out with 3D Bear. And um, you can pull in so many different 3D objects. And I know Thingiverse is very stuck to 3D printing. So um, everything is just that solid white color that comes through because it depends on what your you know, filament is going to be in order to 3D print that. But in this case with Sketchfab, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mitch, is that you actually have colors and texture um, in the background of these 3D objects. Right. right. Yeah. Sketchfab really is, I, I think Sketchfab is designed for people who are pull, putting together games. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you know, the items are coming fully render, rendered with multiple colors. Um, and some of them um, even have some basic animation. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, Sketchfab is really cool. Animation. Wow. That's cool. That's really cool. So, you know, while you fit, may feel like, okay, this library is not exactly what I'm looking for. Now having these other integrations to pull from is huge because it's unlimited what you can do. Yeah, if uh, there's a uh, magnifying glass within 3D Bear, and if you click on that, you'll see the different integrations. And right, right now it's Thingiverse and Sketchfab, and you can click on either one. That's so cool. I'm going to have to check that one out. I think I just updated yesterday, so I haven't even looked at it. All right. At that time, during the blockade, everyone had an iron stove, but there wasn't enough wood. So people just took wooden houses apart. No one had given them permission to do this. Strangers would just come at night and start soaring away at someone's house, even though there were people inside. There were a lot of situations like this in this time of starvation, but I don't want to talk about everything. Once, a woman was torn to pieces before my eyes. After that, I wasn't allowed to go outside. All this happened in broad daylight, in the middle of a beautiful landscape. It was unbelievably beautiful that winter. Bright sunlight, everything covered with snow. The snow wasn't cleared away and it glittered. There were a lot of green fir trees then. All right, and this story is actually coming from an app called w WDR. And it's actually pulling the video content from Holocaust survivors. And they're telling the story, um, their story. And while they're telling the story, the company has put together augmented reality that actually comes alive all around you. So what you see right now with snow, as I turned all the way around me, I can see snow everywhere around me. And the story that's coming to life, beyond just hearing it, beyond just seeing her share it, we're actually seeing the whole place come. Um, it's extremely tragic. I'm not gonna uh, sugarcoat this. You're hearing the story, it's horrific, um, but it's also really important. It's important and there are stories out there that um, while they may be really hard to hear, it's an important part of our history to, um, to listen to for our students to not go back and repeat that. Um, so to be able to see these stories come to life in a way like this, um, I will say this particular app is heavy, heavy, heavy size. It is going to take up a lot of your bandwidth. Uh, for a classroom setting, it's difficult. Um, but I anticipate more and more of these stories coming to life, taking up less space as it goes on, especially 5G, right? When 5G comes out, we're going to start seeing um, these apps not taking as long as they are today. All right. So Merge Cubes. Uh, started, I, I was on a video chat today with somebody, actually David connected me with somebody recently and I was on a video chat with him today and he goes, oh, I remember back in the days when I came to your session and you were talking about merge cubes and it was before the merge cube, you know, explosion that came out. And I think I had a merge cube that yeah, at the time of the session that he came to that actually um, was was a, was the pre merge cube store right so i still have my original merge cube doesn't work anymore um but it was their original kind of prototype when they were first getting them out and um 
it has changed so drastically because at first it was really a, an open source type situation where anybody and everybody can go out and develop for it. And then what came to life, looking at the same cube with different apps, every app made that same cube do something different. They had apps for digging for dinosaur bones. They had hollow globe that, uh, you know, the earth came to life in your hand and you were seeing live, you see live weather patterns, pull, excuse me, pulling from NASA, you see object viewer that was actually uploading your own 3D object and seeing it come to life, all of those things. So those stories, the power of the story, um, in many ways, there's just been an enormous amount of apps that have come out. Now, since then, Merge has released their subscription-based um, app, which is Merge Explorer. And in the Merge Explorer app, there's tons and tons and tons of science experiments and, um, and ex experiences that they are bringing into the classroom in connection to content and the mm. curriculum, uh, directly tied to the standards being pulled in. Uh, but I'm going to show you one app that you can use with your merge for storytelling that I think is pretty cool. And this one is called 57 Degree North. <laughs> Sasha yelled from the front of the small boat. From the tiller, Caleb squinted against the stinging rain as he tried to decipher the abstract shapes floating past them in the darkness. A sudden flash of lightning revealed a huge stone column jutting out of the rough sea directly ahead. All right, and this is a choose your own adventure. Caleb Turn pulled the, the tiller to avoid a collision. The story changes. So in this particular story, you have the option of selecting which direction you want the story to go. Mm. I actually had a lady come up as a volunteer during a session one time, and she was like trying to kill the kids. It was really tragic. I'm like, what is wrong with this lady? I, I chose the wrong volunteer, and she's like ch choosing all the wrong things, but don't worry. No characters in the story were harmed. Um, the kids just kept on surviving. But there are hundreds of variations in this story that I think is pretty incredible. You can stop the story at that point and the next day start it exactly where you left off. Or you can start the story all over and go mm -hmm. back from scratch. So really cool opportunities for your students to do mm -hmm. this. I've even seen um, classrooms use co-spaces mm -hmm. to recreate this exact concept. So they've taken um, the concept of 57 degree north and they have recreated their own story using co spaces and having their story come to life. So pretty neat. Co spaces, um, again, the one that I just told you about has a trial if you're interested in checking them out. They have a lot of great stuff. There's, there's no competition, if I'm honest. So, uh, you know, they, they can be costly. It's something that you'll want to check out depending on the size of your classroom. But what they're offering on the augmented and virtual reality side, especially for, you know, storytelling, uh, story creation is pretty phenomenal. Um, I have down there uh, Coblox. Um, that is their coding option that you could even go in and code the different objects to do different things. And not only do they work on your surface, like we showed before, but they also now work on the Merge Cube if you pay for the add-on, with the Merge, Merge Cube add-on. Um, so if you're interested in checking that out for a project for your students, you can do a 30 day trial using, um, that C O S J A I M E G O code. This is an example of creating for your merge cube. My story is what, what, am, what is my story sh sharing here? All right. If you didn't guess, I'm showing some holidays some US holidays. And so um, very quickly I made this when this was uh, kind of in beta testing to demo at conferences at the time. And I basically just put things around it, but you can put them inside of the cube and make the cube transparent. You could put them around the cube like I did. You could put them inside and outside. So however you choose to make your cube and uh, work with it and describe it, it will come to life in your hand or on the ground or however you want that to happen. So, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, what is the point of all this? And I think one of the highlights of this is not just experiencing it, the interactions is important, but also the creation aspect of the, the stories for our students to be able to do that. I do have a learning transported book out there with ISTE. Um, 
working on book two that hopefully will come out next summer, uh, this coming summer. And um, it will be a book that's really more about the personalized. This book, Learning Transported, is that foundation of what is this, why do we use it, what are some ways of using it in the curriculum, um, some lesson plans, and a lot of tools and resources in there. I also have an EdSearch article that's, that's titled Unleashing the Power of Storytelling. So you have a chance to go in and even see more tools that I didn't cover right now. Um, and then ARVR and edu.com is my website. You can subscribe and get a lot of resources and tools there as well. And you're going to be at FETC. How many, how many sessions are you now scheduled for at FETC? Oh my gosh. That's January, Mitch. I, don't I know. I think uh, you're, I think you're at least seven. May it seven? Be, yeah. It may even be above that by now. You know what? I do a lot of extra things. So while I'm not in the session, I'll probably be doing some activities and things with uh, different ARVR companies that are sharing out some of these resources. I know um, Rochelle and I are hosting an interactive area uh, and sharing some immersive tools. It'll be really engaging and fun. And that's going to be um, pretty exciting because they'll be able to go in and play at each of these stations, getting hands-on experience. Um, and if they follow through with all the stations, then they get a AR, VR, and EDU bag. That's good. Wow. Um, and then um, I know uh, David will be there with us as well and sharing. So it's going to be a fun time. And uh, that's I, I'm really excited because that's going to be kind of a day thing as opposed to a session thing. And I think there'll be some great quality conversations and questions and um, integrations that will come from that. And what, what are you looking to, what are you going to be doing over the next month or two? Which conferences are you going to? So um, tomorrow I leave for HECC in Indiana. Um, it's their state conference. And um, that one's going to be really exciting that I'm, I'm just presenting on Thursday and they have just basically several different sessions where I'll be showcasing I'm going to do a scavenger hunt and uh, do some great sessions on different topics. Of course, you know, getting started with AR VR as well. Um, and so it will be fun. I, you know, that's the conference before the craziness in January, January, we'll start a new phase of, uh, conferences, both FETC, um, I'll be at TCEA sharing as well. And then, you know, working with a lot of school districts and, uh, even universities and connecting with them, um, to bring this, this, these kinds of resources into the classroom immediately, um, for everybody to use. Yeah, it's funny because I'm going to, uh, well, so, you know, I'm, I'm past co-chair of the SIA, which is the edu education publishers. They have a conference in December. Uh, and then in November, uh, New York has their tech conference, which is nice skate, which um, I'll be going to that. And then the week, uh, the week after Thanksgiving, uh, New Hampshire has their tech conference. So that's the Krista McAuliffe conference. And I'll be, and I'll be going to that. So it's kind of like, this is, this is the conference season. That's so crazy. Yeah. I, in October, I spent 18 days traveling for conferences and events. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm looking for just a little bit of time for the holidays. <laughs> right. Well, are you having Thanksgiving? I am. Yeah. Oh. You have family for sure. We always, uh, I don't cook. Oh, okay. Not, okay. Uh, that's not my thing. Um, but I can augment some food for them mm. and, uh, make a really great meal that looks pretty, but, uh, yeah, that's about my extent of options. I'll, I'll, I'll buy a great food. I can buy some good food. So I, I am cooking. Um, <laughs> we're having 36 people. <laughs> wow. We're having um, two turkeys, a goose, and two ducks. Wow. So wish us luck. Yeah. You're cooking at all. I'm cooking. Well, my nephew's going to cook one of the turkeys. But, wow. Um, and he may cook. He, he actually may end up cooking the ducks. But, uh, but, um, but yeah, the rest of it. Uh, and it, I mean, people are going to be bringing plates. I'm not, I'm not cooking all of the appetizers or the, yeah. the other plates, but I'll, I'll cook a lot of the meat, but yeah. That's amazing. Well, you're going to have to scan all of that 3d up right. sketch fab so we can use it. And okay. It's there. All right. All right. <laughs> I'll work on that. 
Okay. Well, you know, first of all, thank you, Jamie. Uh, these were these were great tools. Um, I re I've actually downloaded a couple of them already, and mm -hmm. while, while you were talking, and uh, I hope everybody else in in enjoyed the, the talk and, and learned a lot. Uh, we're recording this, so a number of you, I think, are going to be watching on archives. We usually get about two or three times as many people on the archive as we have live. But those of you who are here live, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, hopefully see you in a couple weeks. And if not, have a very happy holiday and a very ha happy holiday season. And Jamie, uh, look forward to talking to you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Feel free to reach out, share your stories with me. So I can share it out with everyone else too. Okay. Well, uh, good night, everybody from EdChat Interactive, Mitch Weisberg, Jamie Donnelly, and uh, see you all soon. Bye. Thanks, Mitch. Bye.